Should you provide window blinds today on the Landlord Coach Daily Show? Five, four, three, two, one, zero, ignition, lift off. Hey everybody, welcome to the Landlord Coach Daily Is Show. My name is Mark Dolfini. Your host and landlord coach, it is good to see you. So today's topic are should you provide window blinds in your units? And uh, this is this is a question I get actually quite a bit, um, which surprises me how many people really struggle with this. Like if this is something that they really should do or shouldn't do. And uh, I know it 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 just depends. Um, I know there was one <clears throat> uh, property that we had, which was a it was kind of on the edge of like the really nice properties and the okay properties, but it was still in a really nice area. And this was a super cute house. It was a it was a probably about a thousand, maybe eleven hundred square feet, two bedrooms, but it was really decked out, really, really nice property. And the the owner of the property had put in some really high dollar custom made custom fit blinds specific to the windows in that house so it would have made no sense for them to take those window blinds down and take them away but because they were really high dollar they were really durable I mean they were um, they were like plantation type whatever I think I don't know exactly what to call them but they were really high dollar and they're really durable so these things really lasted and, and the they uh, in in this particular case, it kind of made sense for them to provide, provide window blinds because not only did they not want those blinds taken down, they didn't want someone else going and buying blinds that were going to have to screw into the walls and damage them and things, and things like that. So in that particular case, it made sense. In other cases, it makes sense too in terms of the window blind discussion where if it is pretty well thought of like in terms of a multifamily many multifamily properties are where at least have it where window blinds are already installed you know when I'm talking multifamily I'm talking apartment apartment buildings or apartment complexes and things like that and the reason for that is because they want the outside they want the exterior to have a uniform a uniform appearance right so they don't have this guy up there has you know, a red rebel flag hanging in his window and this guy over here is hanging a blanket, a Jeff Gordon blanket up and that sort of thing. So that, not that that would prevent that, but it does tend to not eliminate that, that sort of problem. And you, of course, you can have community guidelines that eliminate that. I know like in the million dollar lease, it has that in the community guidelines that is, uh, that's something that you don't want that you don't want people hanging up things that are not designed as window treatments to be hung in windows so there's an argument for that you know where you supply the window blinds but there's the other side of this where <laughs> and I got sick of buying window blinds for a while because I was putting them in and it seemed like every single time that they were put in it was only a matter of I don't know 20 minutes before somebody called and wanted their window blinds to be fixed or replaced and you can't fix them especially the cheap ones you can't fix them there is no fixing them I mean you might tape them you might you know whatever but they're they're designed to be disposable so the landfills are filled with broken window blinds you know one or two slats or the entire thing or whatever especially if someone's got a large dog and the dog breaks them or whatever so that happens all the time I mean you can have a full-time job but just somebody just replacing window blinds all the time so that's where the balance comes in. Like when should you supply them? When shouldn't you? That sort of thing. So I think fundamentally, you know, and it's not just about window blinds too. There's other things that you have to start to consider like, okay, well, if I supply window blinds, there are some people that I know that as a management client, they came to me, they would not supply appliances, could not convince them that that is just not what they want to do. They said, nope, don't want to be in the appliance business. And that was it. Now, I don't manage for that person anymore just because there was that was the beginning of many other issues that that person brought to the table that was just it made it impossible to manage the properties effectively. But in that particular market, it wasn't unheard of to manage to, to rent properties without at least refrigerator and stove. I mean that that was it wasn't uncommon in the market where I live, that's very uncommon. Like if if you're trying to rent a property 
without refrigerator and stove at a minimum, that property is going to sit for a while. So it, it's uh, because people don't want I mean, unless they've got their own stuff, which is not fairly typical in my local market. Now, again, your local market might be different. So it's just, you know, especially with appliances. But I remember back in my early days, I, um, <laughs> I was, I was, I, I was, they made a lot of mistakes. But what, what, what I used to do was provide people a lawnmower if they didn't have one. And I was like, you know, it was almost like a, you know, Miranda rights. If you do not have one, I will provide one for you. Um, and that was probably one of the dumbest things I ever could have done because, you know, people don't inherently value what they don't pay for. And if they just assumed that I was going to provide a lawnmower for them, well, yeah, it wasn't any skin off their nose that they let the mower sit out in the rain or get borrowed by the neighbors or get stolen or whatever. And that was incredibly frustrating. But at the, at the end of the day, whether you're providing, looking to provide window blinds or appliances or mowers or whatever other amenities that you want to provide for, what is your cash flow allow for? What did you, what did you budget for when you first started this down this road? If you did not budget for window blinds at every turn, then I would say no. If you're planning on buying a property where you want to provide window blinds, then obviously that's something that you should budget for. And if you haven't budgeted for it, th again, remember our golden rule here on, in terms of the cash flow analysis, any line item that you don't budget for in the expense category becomes a job that you create for yourself. Now, you now have become a window blind installer and purchaser, by the way, because not only the times that you have to spend going and hanging the blinds, but you gotta go buy them first, right? And that's all time that's out of your schedule. So now, congratulations, you've created a new job for yourself. But again, remember, every line item that you don't budget for on that expense category becomes a job you create for yourself if you don't budget for it. So make sure that you're budgeting for that, that stuff up front so you're not having to have someone else or not having to create a job for yourself where you're hanging window blinds all the time. Ideally, if you've budgeted for it and you're, whatever that budget would be, then you can do that. Another alternative that you could do, and we're going to wrap up this video kind of short today just because uh, I've got to go, I have to go man a table at, my, at our son's baseball game. I don't know, like I'm not even really sure who I'm supposed to collect money from, but evidently some people are supposed to come by and hand me money. Whatever. Seems like an easy gig. I, I think I can do handle that. But, uh, but the, one of the things that I was thinking about <clears throat> is if, you, if you're not really sure what to do about this, this is, this is kind of a good middle ground that you can do. If there are window blinds that were hung up by the previous residents, and if they are in good shape, you can leave them there as a courtesy. But I would specifically make sure that you do not, that, that it's not provided for in the lease. So you could say, I'm not providing window, because if there's something that's left behind, there's almost an expectation that you manage it, that you maintain it, right? Which is one of the reasons why I don't like people leaving behind water softeners, because I don't want to service that stuff. If you want a water softener and you want, to, you want that in your home, no problem. But you maintain it, you work on it, because those water softeners, there's no user serviceable parts inside of them, hardly ever. And when they stop working, they stop working. So I don't want... I also don't supply that sort of stuff. Just that's just my my thoughts. In in this particular case, we will leave window blinds that are in good shape if they're we'll leave them as a courtesy, but we make sure that they understand that those window blinds are not provided in the lease and we're not going to be we're not going to be maintaining them. So, that's all I have for today. Uh, if you'd like a copy, if you want to go ahead and talk about the cash flow analysis, if you're looking to uh, get the free download at uh, landlordcoach.com forward slash videos, you can get a copy of that download that I was talking about so you can make sure that you're doing your cash flow analysis correctly. And then uh, real quick, if you are interested in joining me in Atlanta on April 30th and May 1st, head over to landlordcoach.com forward slash events. There's going to be uh, the Atlanta event that's going to be there. I've got some other events that are coming up. I don't think they're on the website yet, but they will be uh, in a few days. I'm looking at different different events down the road, and also there's some virtual events on there as well. Well, that is all I have for today. I'm going to go and hopefully not freeze my tail off. It looks it looks like it looks deceivingly warm outside, and I know I know what it, I know better here here in Indiana. <laughs> all right, have a great rest of your day, and please be sure to place a value on your free time because if you don't, someone else will. But most important, there is no amount of money that will make time. Bye.